Okay, I'm going to get if, maybe 30 seconds early. I think I'm going to make a start. <laughs> um, so thank you all for joining. It's a bit mad having so many people. So um, yeah, let's make a start anyway. And um, hopefully nothing on the technology will go wrong. And everything will be okay. Um, so oh, let's turn this on so you can see me. Okay. So this session is the one about making charts accessible as part of Data Connect 22. And a bit of housekeeping first. Oh, and obviously my phone alarm has just gone off. Um, hold on a sec. I knew something would happen. Okay. So for the housekeeping just to start. So recording is on. I should say that at the top of your screen anyway. The chat is off, but like I said, reactions are on. If you've got any issues, put your hand up. Um, we are going to use Slido during the session. It just, you should be able to access it. I think Ella's going to turn it on within Teams. Um, if you can't access it in there, you can go to slido.com and the code is uh, 61886. All the materials, uh, all our support, all our guidance is all available on the analysis function website. Um, I'm going to share uh, links to all that at the end. There will also be materials from today um, uploaded on there when we've got them ready. So it's going to be the recording, um, the slides with the plain text version and um, the Q&A at the end will turn that into a plain text version as well. That'll all be up there. Um, the question and answer session will be at the end of today. Well, I won't take questions during the session because I get really distracted. Um, but uh, if, if you want to use the slide all throughout to put the questions on there as you think of them, that's fine. Ella's going to manage all that side of it. And I think that's everything on that page. If there is anyone here uh, now who is a sign language interpreter, if they can raise their hand um, and Ella will turn on the camera and we'll get that uh, screen pinned. And no one's done that uh, yet, so I'm going to think maybe there's not anyone here for that. But yeah, anytime you want to raise your hand, please do that. I'm um, just having a couple of people saying that they can't hear us at the moment in the uh, Slido chat. Um, oh. I think they seem to be guest people, so I don't know if there's any difference if they're not ONS. Yeah, I, d I can't do anything about that. <laughs> um, just those two. If oh, it's not someone, those... someone non ONS says they can hear, and bees, yeah. Okay, so hopefully. It's just that I, I uh, maybe it's just that you're done something up with the, the teams. Maybe try and join again. Maybe try and join in the browser. Um, so hopefully most people can hear me. If there's only like a couple of messages coming through, Ella. Yeah, I, I think most people can. I think there's just one or two, and I'll try and see if I can get them on. Okay, okay. If there's loads of okay, so, so like one thumbs up. <laughs> um, yeah. So if uh, if there's loads of you that can't, please raise your hand because we'll um, stop and we'll uh, maybe I'll have to join again or something. But I'm thinking, since there's not loads of reactions going up, hopefully most of you can. OK, um, so this is just the welcome slide. So my name is Hannah Thomas and I work for the Analysis Function Central team. Um, and the team is here to support everyone working on government data, stats and analysis. And my role in particular, my team's role is to support the communications to help people get better at communicating data, stats and analysis. And obviously, if you're here, you probably know a hot topic in this over the last couple of years has been um, digital accessibility. And today's session is going to focus on how to make charts more accessible. Oh, I'll keep pressing that and it's not working. Let's try this. OK, so accessibility legislation. So if you didn't know, legislation was passed. It came into force in September 2020. And basically what it means is all content published on public sector websites must meet the level A and double A success criterion in the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.1, uh, which are going to be updated soon to 2.2. But be, what we have to do is we have to try and work out uh, what the success criteria mean and how we apply them to charts and everything I'm going to talk to today is all based on my interpretation and my own research but I do fall in line with government digital service I check in regularly with them um, and other people across government but as far as I know unless anyone here can correct me I'm the only one who's really concentrating on accessibility and uh, like sort of data biz stuff um, they're in like a big way oh so I've got one hand up Hi, oh, sorry, I was just looking at him. I found you. Yeah, I'll allow your mic now and then you can mute yourself. Just allow it. Hopefully that should work now. Can you hear us?
Okay, I'm going to move on with it a little, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, if if you do, um, if you have a question, something oh, it's gone down now. Okay, no, it's perfect. <laughs> so hopefully, Ella can uh, solve it for you. So anyway, uh, so we're going to start off with a bit of accessibility empathy. So I really think that having a better understanding of um, uh, issues people might face helps you be better at adapting what you do to make it more accessible um, and yeah without having to be too strict about going through all the success criteria and everything just better understanding in general about accessibility needs can make us better at making our content more accessible. So first of all um, most of you like this happens a lot a lot of people are quite aware of color blindness but there are lots and lots of different types of color blindness so this is how a chart might look uh, to different people so this is the original one uh, and then this is how it might look to different people with different sorts of colour blindness. So there's lots and lots going on there and we have to be aware that charts will look different to lots of different people. And for some people, legends might not work. Like for this one, you might not understand how to match that because the pears and apples is very similar. So that's the first one is colour blindness. Then you might get, so for me, I haven't got any visual impairments or both these charts, the line chart and the bar chart on this slide, they both look fine, they perfect clarity to me. But if you have low vision, it might look very, very blurry and you might have issues with uh, how you see those charts. So it's about how we, can we help these people? Um, they might need to use Zoom to a very high level um, and also um, a plain text version of it, a description of the chart would also be really helpful. And then we've got people who uh, maybe you can see all the charts, you can see all the colours, everything is fine, there's nothing wrong with your vision, but you really struggle with charts, like you just don't understand them, so they may end up looking to you just like a whole bunch of squiggly lines. Um, and then how can we help these people? So you help them through maybe a plain text alternative, which we can talk about in more detail. Um, uh, and that's basically, yeah, don't forget about these people either. So there are people who just, just can't really process charts in the same way. And then lastly, the other, the other type of user lots of people are more aware of is a screen reader user. So they obviously get the content read out to them. So this is an example of a chart, an example of what a screen reader user might get read out to them. So they would get the headline, which is figure one, European and North American residents helped to push visits to the UK in May 2022, up higher than the previous year. So they get the headline message. Then they get the stat subtitle, which is overseas residents visits to the UK by month January 2018 to May 2022 and then you might get some sort of alternative text that's just like this so it says line chart showing overseas residents visits UK Jan 2018 to May 22 and this is quite common it's quite common that it just kind of repeats what's in the title and then they just get source of statistics international passenger survey download this chart and then the buttons so can you really um, get any sort of grasp of what that chart is showing you from that like limited alt text? So I try to think about what sort of chart and you can try it now if you want. If you had to draw a chart now based on this alt text and this, these titles, what kind of chart would you scribble down? What kind of axes would you have? What kind of points would you be able to put on the chart? And my sort of interpretation was this. I know there's a, a Y and an X axis. I know we're talking about number of visits. I know the time period we're talking about. And I know from here, where's it gone? From here, the visits in the UK in May 22 were up higher than the previous year. So I know this dot is higher than this dot, but that's all I can really get from that um, heading and that alternative text. I can't really get any detail of what that chart is like. So that's basically trying to, trying to give you an experience of what maybe a screen reader user is getting from some of the old text we see. So they might do, they might, a screen reader user might get to these buttons down here and they might get to the data download. So they might look at CSV or they might get to the um, Excel spreadsheet. So this is what they would get, but obviously because they're using a screen reader, they can't see this layout. So they might get to the data, but they can't see the layout. They can't see the data. So they have to have the data read out to them. Um, and so they would maybe get something like this. So we say A1 wrap text, figure one, and then the title would read out again. And then they get A2, overseas residents visit to the UK by month. Then they might get, they don't know where to go then. Like they don't know what the layout looks like. So do they go up, down, across, whatever. So they might get blank A3, blank B3, blank C3, A4, notes, A5, unit, A6, blank, A7, blank, A8, Jan 18, A7, blank. So they just, they don't really know where to go. So if you imagine here now, they just go around here and the layout, they don't understand the layout. There's no, there's no markup for them to understand the layout. Say they eventually get to the table, they might get something like B7, all visits thousands, C7, North America thousands, D7, Europe thousands, E7, other countries thousands. So that's giving them the column headings. 
and then they might get the data read out, which is A8 Jan 18, B8 2734, C8 321, D8 1790. So hopefully it's given you some sort of experience of being read out a table with no markup and no understanding of the layout um, isn't really getting me back to the same experience of looking at the chart. It's really hard, especially when there's, when there's a very small amount of data, it can it can be useful, a really useful uh, alternative to have the table. But with a big amount of data and with uh, sort of a spreadsheet that isn't marked up in any way, with any sort of useful accessibility markup, it can be really difficult to try and understand what these numbers are and try and remember what the column heading was. So that's just a little bit of empathy of the difficulties some people might face with charts. And now we're going to, to look at colours in a bit more detail. So uh, let's have a look. The success criterion for colours. So these are the ones that I've picked out that I think are relevant to colours in charts. So there's text contrast, which we're not going to look at in too much detail today, but it basically says that text and images of text must have at least a 4.5 to 1 contrast ratio with the background. So if you ever have coloured text, you've just got to make sure that the colour of the text against the colour of the background has at least a 4.5 to 1 contrast ratio. And there are online contrast checkers that can help you with that. So sometimes you might use that when labelling things. So just remember that um, yeah, with text, it's a 4.5 to 1 contrast ratio. Then adjacent colours, so all adjacent colours, so colours that are next to each other in graphics, need to have at least a three to one contrast ratio. So it's a slightly lower than text um, because it has to be seen and not necessarily read. This is unless the presentation is essential for communicating a message. So we should always be trying to get it, but if we can argue something's essential, you know, you can sort of drop down from the three to one, but usually we're trying to get that three to one contrast ratio. Then there's use of colour. So colour is not the only visual means of communicating information. And this one can get a bit confusing because it's kind of sounds like a double negative, but we sh colour shouldn't be the only way we communicate something, basically. And then we've got sensory characteristics. So instructions for understanding and operating content do not rely only on components like shape, colour and size. So we can't either rely solely on shape, which we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail. So some of these are going to impact on chart elements, some on chart labels and some on chart legends. And when we talk about adjacent colours, we've got to remember all chart elements are adjacent to the background. So everything is usually a white background. Everything's adjacent to a white background. It's not just the colours that are next to each other in the bars or whatever. So we've come up with in our colours guidance um, some colour palettes you can sort of pick up and use. So this is our colour palette for categorical uh, data. So we do advise to stick to four. Uh, generally in charts, having more than four series can get a bit confusing. I did have a lot of demand for people asking me for extra, so I have added a couple of extra on in the guidance. And basically these have enough colour contrast between the adjacent colours, if they're used in this order. So you can kind of see we go from like a dark to a light, dark to a light, dark to a light. But we can't go too light, because you've got to remember that they all need enough colour contrast with a white background. So that's the one we've got. You can pick up and use it. Um, it's been embedded in the bar charts that are available in HTML on gov.uk. They use it and also on the Explorer and Education Statistics. Um, that uses it as well. So we have got another couple of them. We're not going to look at too much detail today, but there is a focus palette. So when you have a focus chart, you want to drop a lot of the elements back to a light grey and you want to um, pick up one of the colours. That's the palette we recommend there. And then we have a sequential. So sometimes you have sequential data, for example, age ranges. You might have like 0 to 16 year olds, 17 to 25 year olds, 26 to 35 year olds, so on. And those that data has ha an order to it. So there might be an argument that you need to use a sequential uh, colour palette for that. We're not going to look at that much detail today, but all the information is on the colours guidance on the website. Uh, next one. OK, so now we're going to look at using the colour palette. So this is clustered bar chart um, and it's using the categorical palette we just looked at. So when we look at then think about in the success criterion, the adjacent colours. Well, in this one, like I said, this colour palette has been made. So when used in the order, all the adjacent colours have enough contrast with each other. And we also leave these little gaps in between unless we have continuous data, but generally we don't. And that just helps the colour contrast as well. So all the adjacent colours next to other and they all have enough contrast with the white background. So we get a tick for adjacent colours. We know what we're doing. That's good. But use of colour. 
So this one, if you remember going back to that colour blindness slide I showed you with all the different types of colour blindness, some people won't be able to match the label to the bar because the, the colours don't look distinct enough to them. So use of colour, remember the use of colour one, it says, uh, let's go back to it quickly, use of colour says colour is not the only visual means of communicating information. So here we kind of fail in that because the only visual way, the only way you can really match that label to that bar is use of colour. So they do fail on that and the sort of way to get around that is maybe try and rethink your chart. So maybe don't use a clustered bar chart. Um, you Maybe you just want to look at you know, one of the series or like we're going to look at next, you could think about sometimes using patterns or you could think about um, using uh, small multiples alternatives. So we're going to look at some of the alter those alternatives, but it's just bear in mind whenever we use legends, we're going to be failing on this use of colour. So like I said, this is one I've redone it, but I've used patterns this time. So adjacent colours, yep, that's all fine. We've said that. Use of colour, well, we're fine now. We're passing that one because we're not only using colour, we're using also using this shape one but then that puts us in trouble with the sensory characteristics because I'm using shape to match to the legend. Now I've looked a little bit more detail at this and basically what it says on the sensory characteristics one is that just because it does fail it doesn't mean you should completely avoid using it. You can use patterns but there should also be another way of communicating the message just in case people can't understand it and so we'd usually say well use the text alternative as well we should you know alternative text also be communicating this message and we're going to look at more detail at that at the end towards the end of the session um so uh yeah and also the only other thing is patterns also cause us problems in terms of it can suggest incomplete data or forecasted data or provisional data. So we also have to consider those issues. So I'd probably say this is too much, like there's too many patterns here. But sometimes if you have like one solid bar, one patterned bar, that can that could, yeah, it would be fine to use something like that as long as you've also got that text alternative. And then another alternative might be just rethink your chart completely, use small multiples, then we're passing everything. There's no colors aren't really adjacent, they're only adjacent to the white background, that's all fine. Use of colors fine because I haven't used the legend, and sensory characteristics is fine because I haven't used any sort of pattern. So then I'm passing everything. But it's not always easy to make small multiples, they can sometimes look very small on a page, so we also have to consider those aspects of it as well. Another alternative I mentioned briefly was focus charts. So you can just say, right, I'm just going to look at this first series. Um, so this is fine, adjacent colors. Well, it's fine, the, the blue has enough this grey won't have enough with the background. So it is kind of half passing on adjacent colours. And it depends, are these uh, extra ones, are they essential to understand the chart or are they just useful? So you could kind of argue that you've passed the adjacent one if you're just saying, look, these are there for context, but they're not essential to understand the chart. Use of colour, well, technically you still fail because you still have to match this. Uh, whoops, and sensory characteristics, well, that's fine because there are no there's no shapes here. So we're sort of half past this, so it's okay, um, but the plain text alternative would still be um, really important. And it also, oh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second on the next one. Okay, so stacked bars then instead. So stacked bars, um, to see in this bar chart, adjacent colors were fine because we're using the categorical colour palette. We've got that all fine. Use of colour, we're still failing though, because we've still got this legend. Now we can help with the legend by always keeping the legend in the same orientation and the same order as the chart. And that does help, it will help some people, but we're still technically failing it because we've got this thing to match. So the plain text alternative will still always be really important. Or we could just rethink, do we need to always give all the data or can we just focus on one of the series? Could we just focus on satisfied for this series? Do we need to show all the other bits? So just be careful, rethink your charts um, and think about the messages and how, we, how you can get that across with impact. Um, and then sometimes we also see stack bars with negative values and these are really problematic because everything moves around when there are some negative values. So in this one, we're keeping everything in order. We're always going blue, turquoise, pink, orange, blue, turquoise, pink, orange. This one, things move around. So now sometimes we end up with this pink being adjacent to the blue and that does fail the adjacent colors. So with negative values, they're really problematic and we've still got the problem of use of color because we're using this legend and we can't even help now by keeping the legend in the order 
um, in, in the order that the bars are in, the stacks are in, because the stacks move around. So uh, yes, these are best avoided when you've got negative values. And an alternative would be, again, small multis. So instead of showing them all in one chart like this, you show them with three separate charts, and then you pass in the adjacent colours and use of colour. So that's kind of a better approach uh, to take. But again, obviously there are issues, small multiples, they can be difficult to make, they can sometimes be very small, but it's good to bear in mind that that is an alternative you may have. So now we're going to go on to line charts and then we're going to try a new slide off this. So bear with us. Hopefully this will work. Ella's going to put up um, a poll and we're first going to look at adjacent colours. So it's basically for you to say, do you think this line chart passes the adjacent colours success criterion? And you can vote on the slide or. So remember the adjacent one just says, have they got enough have, uh, contrast with the background and enough contrast with the um, other colours on the chart. So yeah, I can see some results coming in now. It's good, cool. Uh, and most of you were saying pass, so on about 84%. Yes, and those of you saying pass, you would be correct. This uses the categorical colour palette. The blue and the orange have enough to pass the success criterion, um, and they have enough um, with the white background. So they are passing that one. So the next one is use of colour. So uh, is colour, have we used colour at any point as the only way to communicate a message? Could you understand the chart without colour? If you think this is okay, um, you could say this is a pass. If you think, okay, well, we're not using colour as the only way to communicate a message. Um, if you think it's a fail, you could say it's a fail. This is a bit tricky. So it's a bit, like I said, it's a little bit hard to understand because it is kind of like a double negative. Yeah, this is this is harder to understand. So we're getting a bit more of a split. So on this one, it does actually pass use of colour. And that's because um, I haven't used a legend here. If this was, if these both these lines were black, I could probably still understand understand the chart because I could understand because of where I placed the labels, I could understand where the labels were and what they were attached to. And I could it might get a bit of trouble here because you know they're crossing over a little bit, but generally I would say that passes the use of colour because we haven't used that legend. Okay, so looking at this one now again. So first of all, on adjacent colours. So what do you think about all the colours in this chart? We've got um, eight series on this one, I think. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got eight, yeah. So what do you think about adjacent colours on this one? Are we passing or failing? Okay, good. <laughs> so we are going to see most people are saying fail. Yeah, it is failing on this one. This does use some of our colour palette. We have started using it, but then I've kind of run out of colours because there's so many. So over here, this is not, some of the adjacent colours here are not going to have enough contrast because they're all next to other. It's much harder with lines than bars. That's the problem. They just aren't enough colours for all the colours to have enough colour contrast between them. When we talk about bars, it's a bit easier because we can control the order that they come in. But when we talk about lines, we cannot control um, what order they're in. So they all cross over each other and there just aren't enough colours to maintain that colour contrast between all the colours. So yeah, it is fail on this one. And what about use of colour on this one? What do you think you Am I using colour as the only way to communicate something? Yeah, so this is really split and it, it is hard to understand. So for this one, I would, I'm a bit, oh, okay. So we haven't used a legend. So everything's labelled. So technically you could argue that passes, but can you follow these lines back? And you you, like, you would struggle here. You can't necessarily follow these lines all the way back. So it's a bit on the fence. And like I said, lots of the accessibility success criteria is a little bit down to interpretation. I would say overall probably failing it, but it is debatable and that's kind of reflected in your views and the slide door is that, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a very easy to see a black and white yes or no answer for that one. Um, so this one then, so this time I've only used the blue and the orange. The blue and the orange have enough colour contrast when they're next to each other. And I try to use dots and dashes to differentiate those lines. So what do you think about adjacent colours here?
Uh, okay, we get a bit of an even split. So, technically, this one fades because you can see here, even though I have used dots and dashes, it's not always easy to see these. I don't know if that's just the way PowerPoint is working, but I am sometimes getting orange on orange and blue on blue. So, again, always a little bit under interpretation, but I would say it's probably overall a failure because we are sometimes getting orange on orange, even though we've used those dashes. What about use of colour? So, have I used colour as the only way to communicate something? Oh, is that from last time? Did that come up straight away for me? I don't know if you've reset that. Oh, yeah. So use of colour on this one. Is that a pass or a fail? Yeah, so there's a really even split on this one as well. So again, this one is really hard <laughs> because we have we are using dots and dashes, so we're trying to not use colour as the only way. But because we've got so many, um, we're still going to struggle maybe to differentiate these lines down here. So it is difficult. Maybe an easier one is sensory characteristics. So what do you think about the sensory characteristics here on this one? Yeah, that coming through now. So I guess the, I mean, some people saying pass, but I guess it's not necessarily a shape. Maybe that's what the conclusion is, not necessarily a shape, but, but dots and dashes would be considered like some sort of, sh there is some sort of shape going on as a way to communicate the message. So it is technically failing it, I would say, on sensory characteristics. Basically, there's just too much going on in this chart. It, it, it's hard to make accessible using dots and dashes or just using different colours. It's basically not going to be possible, which isn't to say dots and dashes aren't useful. If, like I said, similar with the patterns on the bar chart, if you've got one solid line and one dash line, that's probably OK. But we've also got to be careful, especially with line charts, that dashes and dotted lines can suggest forecasted, can suggest provisional, can suggest incomplete data. So we generally say, don't use dots and dashes. Even though they can sometimes help with accessibility, they can also uh, lead to misinterpretations. Um, and also, like, like we've seen, they're pretty hard to work out you know, how people feel about them in terms of accessibility. So the alternative is line charts. This is maybe hopefully an easy one. What are, I don't oh, I, I think we're not using the slide on now because we're going to be running out of time. So I'm going to go run through these ones. But in terms of adjacent colours here, we're fine. We've only used one colour. It's fine against the white background, so that's a, that's a pass. And use of colour is fine because everything is labelled on its own individual mini chart. So that's the one we've got uh, going on there. So that's a really good alternative. But like I've said, especially when we've got this many, they are going to get quite small and they can be a little bit hard to make. But they are really good for accessibility, small multiples. Like focus charts, again, this is a tricky one to wonder about. So adjacent colours, as with the, sort of the bar chart one, this is fine. The UK line is fine. So if you think, okay, just want to, that's the essential thing to communicate. That's the UK line. You haven't got to worry so much about this grey not having enough contrast with the background. But technically, if you were very strict on accessibility, you'd say, oh, this is failing because the grey doesn't have enough colour contrast with the white. And the same with use of colour. If you're saying, okay, well, this is just the message, this one, they say, okay, well, that's fine. Um, you can see that use of colour is fine there. I've labelled all the lines, but you just got to bear in mind some people won't be able to see this grey. So they're only going to, be able to see, they can see the rankings, which is hopefully be able to see the text, but they won't be able to see this grey. So again, it's really up to interpretation, but nothing's going to be, the small multiples are always like the best one for accessibility. And then finally, pie charts, when they are used, you know, uh, sometimes some people have a real thing against pie charts, but when they are used, and they can be sometimes used effectively, you got to, the other thing to bear in mind is adjacent colours, when you've got an even number, you can go like dark, light, dark, light, and all the adjacent colours are fine. But when you've got an odd number, you will technically end up with not enough contrast between two of the segments. You can help this with the white border. That can, that can uh, usually negate the issues with it, but just to bear that in mind. Use of colour, we're pretty good with line uh, pie charts because it's similar to line charts. You can label the segments directly as long as you haven't got any really teeny tiny, but we'd say stop at four anyway, maximum for pie charts. So they're, they're not too bad, but they're bad in terms of accessibility because uh, it's a different thing. But if you need to zoom in, <clears throat> they don't really adapt because you don't really want to get really small. And then you kind of lose, if you zoom in really close on them, you lose sort of and understand how big the segment is. So they're not great for accessibility, but in terms of colours, they're not bad. So to summarise what we've done on colours is 
if your child is failing on some of the colour success criteria, think about the message and think about simplifying it. Do you really need all those stacks or all those clusters? Do you need to put all the data in or can you just pick up one of the series and just communicate that one? And that will help um, fix your colours issues. <coughs> Uh, small multis are a really good, accessible alternative, but there are issues with them um, getting very small or being hard to make. Some use of patterns is okay, but always bear in mind that thing about forecasted, provisional, incomplete data. It can sometimes suggest something and lead to misinterpretation. Avoid legends. If you are going to use them, and you do have to use them sometimes, they're unavoidable. Try and keep the, the order and the orientation should be kept the same and write descriptive alternative text. That's always the best backup. Um, uh, if people are going to have issues with colour, they need to have the, the message communicated to them in another way. OK. So what time is it? Oh, yeah, it's not doing too bad. OK, alternative text then. So this is a separate success criterion. It's non-text content and it says all non-text content that is presented to the user has a text alternative that serves the equivalent purpose. And the really um, key thing there is equivalent purpose. And think about all the old text you may have written in the past. Is it serving? Did it serve the equivalent purpose or as near as you could get to it? So Gov.uk and uh, Exploring Education Statistics website, there may be other ones that do it as well, I'm not aware of, but they're the ones I am aware of. They have an ability to switch to a table view. So Gov.uk, you can toggle and switch using these buttons. You can switch between a chart view and a table view. And this is really handy for smaller bar charts like this. Then if this is all marked up properly, a screen reader can read off those um, numbers and understand the chart as a table. And this is okay in this instance because there's not that much data in there. So, and if it's marked up properly, I can have a better understanding of what the column headings are. So it is really handy, but um, uh, yeah, where if you're ever gonna use a table as your text alternative, you gotta make sure people can get to the table easily. The table can't be too long. It's gotta be marked up properly with the code for screen readers to be able to understand it. And the best check is to think, could I understand? If somebody read out this table to me and I couldn't see it, would I be able to understand the data? So that's one option. Going back to the one we looked at earlier, this is the kind of option we see more commonly. Um, and so we've got a, sort of a very short piece of alt text that describes the chart. So here again, we're back with the figure one, European and North American residents helped to push visits to the UK in May 22 up higher than the previous year. Um, and we've got this little piece of uh, alt text which says line chart showing overseas residents visits UK Jan 2018 to May 2022. And we said, well, basically all we're getting from that is this little sketch here. We know one dot is higher than the other. We kind of know what's on the axes, but we're not really able to visualise it. So we need something else. So my suggestion would be we need to write longer, more descriptive text alternatives. Um, there's always been a, a thing in the past of, oh, well, lol text needs to be limited to character, a certain number of characters. And that's true if we're talking about um, like images of you know, photos and things like that. When we're talking about complex images like charts, we shouldn't really have this character limit on it. Um, and we shouldn't really be putting it in the alt text code behind the image. It should be in the body text of the page, which we're going to talk about in a bit more detail. I'm not saying this is going to be easy to implement, but this is what the best practice sort of guidance would be on providing alt text. So you provide the headline, which again is European North American residents helped to push visits to the UK up higher than the previous year. You have the stats headline, which is overseas residents visits to the UK by month, January 2018 to May 2022. And then you have this descriptive alt text. Now I'm going to read this out. I wouldn't know, you know, it's bad presentation practice to read out text on a slide, but just in case, you know, to give you the experience of what it might be like to listen to this being read out. The alt text I've suggested is visits to the UK by overseas residents fell sharply to very low levels in April 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. Visits from residents of North America have remained low since that time, but have started to increase in recent months, standing at 420,000 visits in May 2022. Visits from European residents rose slightly towards the end of 2020 before falling back. In July 2021, they started rising again. In May 2022, there were 2 million visits, almost equal to pre-pandemic levels. 
Now, it's still hard to visualise a chart when you have someone reading out the description, but it is easier than if you've just got a very short piece of text or if you've got um, a table, a big table. So I'm going to pause a second. Um, I'm going to ask if you can, if you've got a piece of paper, a pen and paper handy, if you want to try and draw, so like on the last one we, we drew when we had this, if you want to try and draw the axes and try and draw some lines um, for what you might get from that kind of odd text, um, how might you get near to the chart? I think that would be a useful exercise. I'm just going to pause a second, give you a chance to do that. And also there's a hand up, Ella. I don't know. We can unmute them if there's an issue. Has it gone down? Nope, yeah, it's gone down. down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you have had a chance to sort of scribble down, maybe what you get from that. My suggestion was, if you're not going to get this, because this is the actual chart, it's not going to give you all that. But maybe you've got something, you've got some idea of, sort of the numbers, and maybe you've got something that sort of shows, okay, the European visits went up, then they went back down, and then they went back up to near pre-pandemic me. Um, and then you've got something about North America going back up here. Yeah. So I'm not saying you're going to have exactly that, but you're going to get, hopefully you'll get a bit nearer it from that descriptive alt text. And then, like I said, where do we put this? Well, I wouldn't put it in the, in the code and background. And that's based on GDS advice, government digital service advice, is that lots of people need the alt text, not just screen reader users. So we need to put it in the body of the page, whether that's you're doing a Word document or whether you're publishing something online, it needs to be in the body of the text. And I'd say it needs to go directly underneath. So if I am using a screen reader now, I get rid of this, then this, this should be hidden from me. And then so I directly go to the description. And that would be my best practice, gold standard. That's who you provide the descriptive alt text. And I know there will be difficulties with it. I know we've, sometimes there's limits on word count. We're trying to get word counts down, but that is the best way if you're going to have a chart to provide the message of that chart. So we're going to have a, a little bit of practice in this and use Slido. So we're going to. Um, let me check something else here. So this is the chart we've got. This is what we're working on. Imagine you're working on this in your job. Um, you've got the headline, school most commonly stated childcare arrangement that helps mothers work. You've got the stats subtitle, percentage of mothers of children aged 0 to 14 in paid work who stated the listed childcare arrangement helped them go to work, England 2021. And this is the chart. And I want you to think about how would you describe this chart over the phone? You, you don't want to describe every single point. You don't want to give every single piece of, of data. You just want to give, if you were talking to someone on the phone, how would you describe it? What are the main points you want to get across? So if you can, I'm going to give you just a minute to try and do that in the Slido. Uh, I think Ella's going to put it up. I think it is already up. Can you not see it? It's not coming up on mine. Oh, yeah, now it is. So I just put my name in because I need to put that in um, to see the responses if any come through. I'm not saying it's easy. Yeah, you could use a table. Somebody's put that in. So we could use a table for this one, um, but you could also use a description. Yeah, so some good ones coming through. Yeah, so yeah, it's a bit hard to do some slide though because um, you know you you need more time to think about it. Yeah, good, cool. So yeah, there's lots coming through on there. Um, my suggestion would be something like this, which is the most commonly stated childcare arrangement that helped mothers go to work was children being at school. Forty-four percent stated this. So I think we need to try and get some of the figures in. Have reliable childcare relatives to help are also popular, 42% to 38% respectively. And then I think maybe we want to look at the sort of the policy ones. So we're using hours from the 30 hours free childcare was stated by 8%, 4% stated the 15 hours scheme, and the least common range was employer pays for some of all of the childcare 1%. So I've, yeah, I've got, I think somebody mentioned that, yeah, like maybe mention the most common and then the least common. Um, so yeah, it's really good to see some of them coming through. So it's just giving more descriptive 
um, text alternative for people who maybe can't understand the chart, can't see the chart, um, are providing that for them so they can better understand what's being shown. OK. Um, sometimes people argue that the headline is the alternative text. And I mean, it does give you something, does give you the message, but I think we could probably do better. It's not giving us the equivalent experience, which remember is what's in the success criterion. We want to give people the equivalent um, as near as they can to looking at that chart. OK, so to summarise on alt text is it's really important. It's really important for lots of different users. It can be a table sometimes, but should only really be a table um, when we've got a small amount of data. Um, you should describe it, but don't think, don't describe every single point. Give, think about what, what would you say to someone over the phone? How would you, what, what do you get when you look, glance at it? What's the message that comes across? And sometimes it can be really helpful in making you think about, OK, is it what's the message? Is my chart a good enough chart? Is it giving a message? Um, because if you can't write the alt text and that means maybe the message of your chart's a bit confused. We do don't think about being limited to characters because that's really to do with images on websites. And, and the new advice is don't put it in the code behind the image, put it in the body text and ideally put it directly underneath the chart. OK, so the last thing is about publishing charts it's just really quick so it's going to be on slide or just some quick sort of polls on there oh, not the so we're going to look at the last really success criterion to think about is that text is used to convey information rather than images of text except if the image is customizable or essential so this is just to say that um we used to say that heading and source information should be within the image of a chart. It used to be something about uh, charts being downloaded and reused somewhere else and losing the context. But now lots of people tend to use screenshots of charts. So that's kind of less important. And for accessibility, it's really important that headings and source information go in the body text. So now the image, if you are using images, it should just be the chart itself because of this particular success criterion. Uh, oh, sorry, before we go into that quick uh, publishing one, we're just going to do a quick recap of publishing a chart uh, in a report. So just to recap what we've got, we've got headline title and statistical title here. Can I have some more? All of us stays on top of baby names list. Then we've got the statistical title, number of baby boys given the top 10 most popular names, England 2020. And then we've got the image of the chart. So some, some of you might be working on websites where you can put the chart in HTML and that's great. Sometimes you still need to upload an image. So this should be an SVG format because that allows you to zoom in. So people with low vision, they may need to zoom in. SVG format allows you to zoom in to a really high degree and it keeps this clarity. That should be marked as decorative so screen readers skip over it unless you can link to the media file, in which case the code behind the image should say links to media file and describe what media file it links to. That is in the guidance. I know I've skipped over that quite quickly here, but basically the message is use an SVG format. That's the best thing to use. Um, then we've got the alternative text like we just talked about. I'm not going to read through that now, but you can see it on there. It's directly underneath the chart. It explains the chart. Then we've got information on the source with a link to the source. Then we've got the an accessible data download. So it says download the data for figure one. ODS 4.6 kilobytes. So that's an accessible data download. It'll be marked up. Um, it will be in an open document spreadsheet, an ODS file. And uh, yeah, you've given a descriptive title for what that is, not just said to download the data. You've told people what the file type is and you've given them the size. That's all really important in terms of best practice. And then right at the end, you've got the notes. So notes should come last and only use when necessary and should be as short as possible so that this example is on in within our guidance. So you can look at it in more detail on there if you need to. But we're running a bit short on time now, so I'm going to skip past it. Uh, other formatting then. So this is the slide of it. Sorry, this is it. So we're just going to look at some quick other bits of formatting. Um, we're going to use slide for this really quickly. So which of those do you think is more accessible, the left or the right? Which is more accessible, left or right? OK, cool, yeah, I'm getting nearly all of you saying the one on the right. And yeah, this one's less accessible. We've got these data markers. They can be right sometimes, but they usually add too much clutter. We've got weird wonky text, the text written perpendicular, so I've got to in my head. It's got a grey background. Um, it's just got a bit too much going on. So yeah, this one's better. Oh, and it uses a legend. This one doesn't use a legend. And then what about this one, left or right on this one, which is more accessible?
Yep, for this one, it would be the one on the right is more accessible. And that's basically because, again, wonky text. Just don't use wonky text. It's really hard to read. Just re redo your charts so your text is all horizontal. This one for grid lines. Which one's more accessible? Oh, whoops. I'll give the answer then. A scream of any. Yeah, so this one this is a bit of a weird one because technically these grid lines haven't have enough contrast and these grid lines don't. But grid lines are there to be helpful. They're not necessary. So and they just they just make it a bit harder to actually see the lines. So we do actually say yeah, this one is the more accessible one with the lighter grid lines. And then this one, so this one's a bit different. So this one is what which one do you prefer out of these? Uh, or these value labels. Do you prefer no value labels, value labels on the end, or value labels on the base? So left, middle, or right, where do you prefer them to be? Which picture do you prefer? Sorry, rather, that's not where the value label should be. Which picture do you prefer, left, middle, or right? OK, so this is a bit of a this isn't necessarily an accessibility thing. The things we've got to think about the accessibility here are the contrast of the colour against the background, so the white against the blue. Um, and also I think about if you really want value labels, is it better just to provide a table of the data instead of a bar chart? And then it's just an interesting one for us to do because uh, the head of data viz and ONS tweeted this and people did say, yeah, they like value labels and they like them on the ends, which most of you are saying here. But the traditional has been to put them on the base because then that allows the numbers to be aligned. So tens over tens, units over units and so on, unless you've got the small bars here. So this kind of just kind of shows that testing is really useful. Um, and in terms of accessibility, we just go, you've got to be careful with the contrast. Uh, so going back to those empathy we had at the start and how we can help them just to, to wrap up here. So the colorblind user, we, we talked a lot about color and how we can help with different uses of color and maybe just changing the charts we use. Users with low vision, we can help them with an SVG format for the image of the chart to provide a clarity when they zoom in or the plain text alternative, really important for them if they can't see the chart. And for the users who find charts difficult or are screen reader users, it's the plain text that really comes into play and is really useful and it should be descriptive in a place they can access easily um, and where it makes sense. So just going back to those users we talked about at the start. And then like we said, there's about testing then, like that value labels one was tested. Do, do a test in. It's always really good. It's really useful. It gives you loads of, um, especially accessibility testing, gives you a really be much better understanding. So you can do it by tweeting, put out Twitter polls. You can do it on base camps. Uh, if we've set up two base camps, um, which we which are all linked to on the website. Um, you can join them, post questions, and ask people for feedback. Ask your colleagues. Uh, especially if you've got any colleagues who have accessibility needs, um, they might be really useful. Some of your departments might have an accessibility network. You can ask them. Ask your presentation dissemination champions. Again, we'll, we'll link to information about them. Each department should have one. They should be able to help you. Download screen reader software. There's free screen reader software and using that to test, do your own testing can be really helpful. And also there is an accessibility community of practice. Um, across government and they are really helpful for post questions, ask, ask, asking questions on there can be really useful feedback. And that's it. So thank you. We are going to have some time. Sorry, no, I may have raced a bit fast because I knew we run out of time. We're going to have a little bit of time now for questions. Um, I think Ella's going to read them out. Uh, yeah, uh, so yep. the first question we got that got the most likes was, uh, do we have guidance on the most e efficient and quickly to produce accessible charts in different programs, e.g. Uh, Excel, R, Power, B Power BI? So the answer to that is no, I don't have um, I don't have guidance on very much how to do it. Um, it just depends on what you should do to make them because, uh, yeah, there, I, I guess <laughs> it's only it's only been me for 18 for about two years, so I, yeah, I haven't got around to doing that. Sorry, but yes, hopefully, if you do have it, please share it. If you do make it, because that would be really useful for a lot of people. But the the, the color palettes are on there just to be able to pick up and use. So that's probably the, the nearest we've got to that. Um, the next question is quite a few questions about are we sharing the recording in the slides? Just to review on that one again. 
Yep, so at the end of today, if you go to the homepage uh, for the Analysis Function website, by the end of today, I will have a link up that will um, link to a page that has the recording. Well, no, I don't know if I have the recording quite yet, very soon. Uh, but we'll have the slides, plain text version of the slides as well. Um, there's a question if there is a contrast checker that you recommend. Yes, if it's, it is linked to from the guidance, but it's web aim. If you go web aim contrast checker, that, that's a really useful site. You can just put in the codes and it'll tell you. I think the list of questions as well, Cedric might have said that one. So if okay. you guys want to scroll through, you should be able to find the correct one that we use. Um, and then we've got a question saying, can't we use non uh, white backgrounds more? I have Erlen syndrome slash stress, uh, uh, visual stress and struggle with white backgrounds. Lots of people choose dark modes where possible. Yeah, so I have spoken to this uh, with GDS before about the non white backgrounds. The problem is most websites have white backgrounds that we publish on um, and the, the, if we can build charts in HTML, whenever we can, then the web, if the website, if you have a dark mode or something, it will, it will change the background. And then that kind of causes issues because the color contrast doesn't, doesn't uh, stay, doesn't to the required level. So it is tricky. The, yeah, in the ideal world, you'd have somewhere where you could have the chart yourself and then adjust it to the, your needs. But at the moment, what we've spoken about with um, GDS is that the white background is the sort of best one to start with and hopefully sometime in the future we'll have something where you can sort of adjust it to your needs but there there isn't a perfect answer to that now but I am aware that it is a problem it's just we don't have the technology really to address it at the moment sorry uh, the next question is how do you mark up a table to be read by a screen reader oh so there's loads and loads of um stuff in the guidance on that I can't go through it all today but it's basically just making sure that the head the uh, column headings are all marked up as column headings um and that uh well there's loads and the releasing stats in spreadsheets there's absolutely loads of information about marking up spreadsheets and if you look online about marking up tables in html there'll be loads on that but um that's quite a, a very long answer I can't really give now right now if you come to one of the accessibility clinics, I can go through that in much more detail. So that will be on the support page of how you access those clinics. Uh, any recommendations for drafting dynamic alternative chart text where a chart can be updated with live data and one statistical dis description cannot be given in a draft? Any recommendations for drafting dynamic alternative chart text? Ah, oh, well, that would be really good. Yeah, if you could have some sort of the, the alt, alt text yeah, automatically update. Um, I yeah no, I have no idea how you would do that. But if you ever work that out, then yeah, please let me know. Um, because it would be really useful if when the data of the charts updated, the old text automatically gets updated. Um, yes, some people are better with code than me. Um, if they know to do it, that would be great. Please let me know. Uh, you mentioned a standard for success government comms, which can be applied to charts as well. Can you please share where to find it? Standard for success. Oh, let's just move. Screenplay to charts. I don't know if I did mention a standard for success. Success criteria? Yeah, I think it must mean the success criteria. Uh, yeah, so the success, success criteria, if you just Google um, web content accessibility guidelines, you'll get all the success criterion up and you can look through them. I yeah. think that's what you meant. Please put another one in if that isn't what you meant. Um, does hover over text on each data point along the ability, along with the ability to toggle each series on or off, ensure we meet the criteria? So the hover text thing, right? So first of all, with that, with the hover text, so um, that is, I know that's a lot of the ONS charts is what you get. You can sort of hover over it. I don't think that works with screen readers. Um, and also, you've got to think if you've got a long time series, is that really? Am I really going to? be able to hover over all of them and have them all read out and understand that chart. And I've noticed, I don't know whether the toggling series on and off actually works either. So I'm going to say no. Um, and you definitely need to still think about alt text um, with those ones, because just because you can do that doesn't mean that it's going to be accessible, because often that functionality isn't. And even if it is, having all the data points read out to me isn't necessarily giving me the equivalent experience of looking at that chart for that one. Um, next question, isn't the problem with small multiples that you, could, you can't easily judge relative values? Mm, so there might also be some database 
uh, criticisms of small multiples. So yeah, maybe they are harder to see next to each other. I think maybe that's what you mean. If you keep them all the same axes, it, that's just it. Yeah, it's a data. It, it, all all charts need to be considered before you publish them. Is this the best way to communicate this data? But small multis can be really, really useful. There are obviously going to be some drawbacks. There's some drawbacks with all charts, so um, that might be one of them as well. But is this still massively useful in lots and lots of other ways? Have we got time for one more? Uh, yeah. What about charts and applications with interactivity? Um, how could you provide alt text when you don't know what the chart user will be looking at? Yeah, so that's kind of like to do with dashboards and um, where you can sort of drop down and choose things. Yeah, there's no easy answer to that. Dashboard accessibility is way, way harder. Um, uh, and very, just basically very, very difficult um, to make accessible. Um, yeah, so yes, very difficult to make interactive charts accessible, but we just this is more to do with charts in reports at the moment, this kind of guidance. Is there guidance for geospatial data, so for accessible cartography? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, again, it's only been me for a couple of years in this team, so I haven't got anywhere near looking at maps. Um, but yes, if, if you find any, please let me know um, what it is, because I would also like to know about maps accessibility. Could you put text in the legend to say the categories are the same order as the chart? Yeah, you probably could do that. That probably would help, but it might make the chart. Just to look be careful with clutter in it, but yeah, that would um, that would uh, probably be helpful. Yeah, just to put that in. And then, do you have a view on which is better for showing how things make up a whole, a stacked bar chart or a pie chart? Uh, I think it depends on the data. I, I, some people hate pie charts. I don't mind them. Um, uh, in certain situations and sometimes I like stacked bar charts and then some situations I think there's just way too much data all in one chart and I don't like them so it does really depend on what the data is and how the chart looks but test that's what I'd say check it out there test ask people around you what they think for the, for each in for each chart in particular okay um, so somebody that hates pie charts. <laughs> yeah, there are lots of reasons not to use them, but I, do, I just within, I, I wouldn't say a blanket, no one ever using them. So I think I'll leave it there for the q and I will look through all the questions and we'll type them up, um, most of them, the most popular ones and uh, the answers and put them on the website as well. I think Elle's going to turn on the chat right now at the end um, and just going to put in links to the homepage for the analysis function website where we will put up a page later. Um, We've got that, that yeah, the link's materials. in there. And our feedback oh, links lovely. Right oh, there. you put in there. Feedback links in there and link to our support page as well. Yeah. Yeah, support page is also on there. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to uh, leave it there now. Hopefully that was useful. Hopefully I didn't talk too fast. <laughs> the recording will be available so you can uh, slow it down, look at it again if you need to. And to find the recording, if you just go on to the analysis function homepage in the next couple of days, there should be a link on there for you to get that. Oh, and I'm, I'm on Twitter, so if you want to contact me on there as well, that's absolutely fine. Thanks very much, Hannah. Thanks. It's really clear, thanks. Oh, <laughs> thank you.